very good evening to one and all. Uh, a very warm welcome to each and everyone to this uh, uh, talk session. Uh, in fact, we are uh, as a part of the National Startup Day celebrations, uh, which are being held at IGNO headquarters, Delhi. And the regional centers have also been requested uh, to hold talks in a similar manner uh, to focus on the startups, basically. So as a part of this uh, National Startup Day celebrations, uh, uh, IGNO Regional Center Cochin is also privileged uh, to hold this session at a very, very short notice, I must say. And uh, I'm so grateful to the resource person for the today's session, uh, dietitian Lakshmi J. Srinath Mangat, uh, who has uh, very gracefully agreed uh, to be the resource person for today's talk Thank show uh, on, her on the topic, My Startup Journey. In fact, uh, uh, just before uh, we start, with the session, I would request our regional director uh, in charge for today's session, uh, Dr. V. T. Jalja Kumari, to kindly welcome the resource person, ma'am. Thank you, Prasida, ma'am. First, before welcoming, I have to say many, many thanks to Dr. Prasida Unikrishnan, Assistant Director of Regional Center Coaching, for immediately conducting this uh, program because Madam has already told that this was. Uh, uh, notified and circulated in a short uh, duration and it was very difficult to find a resource person in the short uh, period but happily uh, madam was uh, taking that uh, responsibility and she organized this program in a hurry hurry manner and we got luckily we got one um, young enthusiastic entrepreneur for uh, giving us a talk at this moment so just uh, one second, I will tell something about this program because in 2022, we have started this uh, uh, celebration of National Startup Day in India uh, with the interest and um, initiative of our Honorable Prime Minister uh, Narendra Modi ji. And it is fixed on 16th of January. This year also with a lot of programs, India is celebrating a week uh, startup day, startup celebrations uh, of a week, and it has been started from January 10th onwards. Today, with the so many programs all over India, along with the uh, Azadi Ki Amrita Mahalsav, uh, we are also celebrating, and today it will come to an end uh, with this uh, celebrations. At this moment, Ignu RC Kochin is uh, very much happy to have such a young entrepreneur, especially an alumni of Regional Center Coaching. And uh, uh, I came to know from uh, Prasida Madam that uh, she is also a very skillful, young, enthusiastic entrepreneur. And uh, for the whole uh, staff and other academics of this uh, Regional Center Coaching, I wholeheartedly welcome uh, our alumni or our own learner uh, Lakshmi uh, to give us a beautiful talk and we are ex uh, we are expecting and we are waiting very eagerly for hearing from you. So welcome uh, Lakshmi for all the uh, staff of uh, Regional Center Coaching. And also I wholeheartedly welcome all my colleagues and the learners and the study center uh, part-time staff and other learners to join with us to hear from Lakshmi. Thank you, Lakshmi. And over to Prasida, madam. Uh, thank you, Jalja, ma'am, for welcoming each and everyone. Before I hand over the mic to Dr. Uh, to dietitian uh, wow. Sri Lakshmi, I would just like to introduce, uh, give a brief uh, background about her to the viewers. In fact, uh, Lakshmi is a founder or partner of Herbal Sutras LLP, a five-year-old wellness organization in Kochi, Kerala, through which she practices uh, food, health, you, nutrition, yoga therapy, and teaches uh, and sells a niche artisan soaps made from the Indian herbs. She has completed her certification in nutrition and child care and master's in dietics and food service management from IGNO. And this helped her in kickstarting her career as a consultant, dietitian, and sports nutritionist. Uh, diet, uh, Lakshmi is also a member of Association for Evidence-Based Dietics and Nutrition. And uh, according to the, uh, and she has been a very 
Uh, she is also a certified yoga and fitness trainer from MG University Kottayam and also a published author. Uh, she has, uh, I think she's a person with many hats to wear. And uh, I think her introduction, I feel uh, she's an active uh, blogger also, YouTube blogger. And uh, she has also has a great passion for photography and likes to take historical walks also across her hometown Kochi. And she's working towards bringing uh, Ayurveda and medical nutrition in her practice and suggesting a holistic approach to both sports person and the other people alike. She also feels uh, uh, she's, uh, in fact, a person who is wearing so many hats. Uh, and I think this is a very brief introduction, which I could just uh, give in such a short time. Uh, in fact, if I have left out something, uh, you, I sincerely apologize for the same. And uh, now I request uh, uh, Sri Lakshmi to kindly deliver her talk. A very warm welcome to you, ma'am. Yeah. Thank you so very much, uh, Dr. Prasita. Um, this is actually a goosebumps moment for me because to be uh, actually invited to my uh, uh, university to give a talk on the special day uh, where I know I am indebted to this company which I started because I get so many platforms to talk about it. And I'm so happy that I'm, I was invited, even though on a short notice, uh, to this organization, which I believe uh, you know, gave me everything that I really got right now because education, I believe, is the power of humankind where you know people really stay stand before you and talk. So thank you so very much, Prasida, ma'am. And Dr. Jalaja, thank you so much for the welcome. So without much ado, let me just say I am so happy on this special day. We all know that today is the National Startup Day. And the entire week from 10th to Jan 16th, we have been cel celebrating the startup uh, innovation uh, mission. So it's about to end today. And uh, what is with startups? We hear about it everywhere. And I hail from Kerala where we have a lot of startups. I think the maximum startups come from this state. Uh, probably the government is supporting much, especially the uh, women uh, group uh, to go forward with their startups. Uh, and I also proudly say that I'm an al alumni of Regional Center Cochin IGNO. Uh, in, I belong to Regional Center Cochin and I'm an alumni of IGNO because um, I, st I studied my certificate, yes, CNCC. But after that, I went on to do my master's in dietetics and food service management from IGNO. So um, if I have to start, everybody likes to hear a story. So what Prasida ma'am said, I asked her, what should I actually say when you say in sudden notice, you can't just prepare on an entrepreneurial journey. So she just said, talk about how you travel. So my travel had lots sorry, of Sorry to interfere, actually, sorry I to interfere. Just a second. Before I reach. Prasida ma'am. Just a second, Lakshmi, I am I'm, uh, telling you, sorry, I have yeah. to uh, welcome our uh, most respected Dr. M. Dajesh. Sir has joined from Regional Center Vadagara, uh, and I'm sorry uh, for interfering. Lakshmi. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank sir. you, ma'am. And okay. uh, you needn't have uh, uh, stopped the discussion uh, because I was, Not in problem. any case, uh, uh, going to be with you. So thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, thank sir. You. Okay. okay. Sorry, sorry, you can proceed. Not a problem, sir. Sir, hi, I'm Lakshmi, sir, and uh, I'm an entrepreneur. So I have to say that I'm an alumni of uh, IGNO from Regional Center Coaching. So we are having a talk about the, my entrepreneur journey. And so to start with, uh, I come from a lot of backgrounds put together from science to finance. And um, I was, after my childbirth, I was totally clueless. In the sense that you study for your parents initially and then you end up clueless as what, what needs to be done. And then I loved literature a lot and I wanted to study in St. Teresa's College. So there was this point in time when I called up Dr. Lata of St. Teresa's and asked her, do I have a seat for literature? And she said, Lakshmi, it's just closed. Maybe you should wait for one more year. But I didn't want to really wait. And there was another love is the love for food. And I love food so much that I wanted to learn more about it. So that is when my uh, husband, my better half said, like, you go learn about more, more about food, but I did not know where to go. But I stayed in Kadavandra and Igno is at the other end of the road. So that is when I decided what greatest universe of the world actually. I have any opportunity. I went to the first 
first floor of uh, R.C. Kochina office. Sir, he was quite young at that time, a few years ago. And then uh, he said, uh, I said, sir, do I have an option for a certification in nutrition? He said, yes, but together you also have an option for a post-graduation. So I never knew a person who did physics had an opportunity to do nutrition um, embassy. I was so thrilled, but there were clauses. They see, said you have to first finish your CNCC or CFN. And CFN had economics. I didn't want to do it because economics was terrified me. So I went on to do CNCC, which I loved so much. It was not cakewalk. So people have written the exam. No, it wasn't cakewalk for me. And then it was MSc. And to all those who are listening to me, who think that, you know, uh, ignore her, there's no problem, let's go and do it. Please don't come here with that small notion. If you are really into a serious study, this is where you we should come to. And um, I know colleges who take my textbooks, ignore her textbook as a reference textbook. RD exam of IDA has physiology a textbook as their reference textbooks. And I proudly, I was so proud about it. And later I came to know about it. The module actually got the Commonwealth, uh, a Commonwealth you know, award for the best module. So I know, I've, you know, I had the best uh, textbooks to study from. And thankfully, um, I cleared all my exams in the first e e attempt. I was the best student. And my uh, yearning to learn in Century SARS happened because Century SARS my, was my study center. And I went to, to that college and studied for almost three to four months. So I believe when you have a yearning, it happens. And then why on my journey, when I started my MD journey, that is when the idea of a herbalist handmade started happening. So um, it is that you should have a plan beforehand when you start studying itself make a plan that what you're going to do after three years after five years what are you exactly going to do for, for me msc meant no i am not going to work in a hospital i wanted to practice on my own so i had already decided i will not go for a nine to nine job or a nine to five job and i had laid platform for my um, dietetics practice with herbal sutras probably in the first year of my, uh, in the year itself when I was doing CNCC, first year of my MSc itself. What the plus point of my MSc was, more than Ansar sir told me, even before I took it, Lakshmi, you can take it because you can finish within five years. So my child was very small. Uh, I had to manage a lot of things at home as well. So the plus point of IGNO is that it is for, it's a people's university. It is for everyone. You, you're not like strangled for time or anything. So that is the best part that really happened. So any people who are listening to me out there who really want to go for an education, I think this is the place uh, for you to come back and learn and educate yourself. And MSc cleared, started giving me ideas as to how I should lay the stone for my uh, entrepreneurship journey. And herbal sutras happened at that point of time, but I didn't have a dietetic certificate to practice. So I went on to do herbalism, um, Ayurveda, and I went on to make my own soaps, a handmade soaps, which was made from um, oils and herbs from our land. And the first thing is that I had a product and capital was given naturally from my better half. So there were three things. I had my product, I had my uh, capital and marketing was very important. So my child was into the kindergarten, into school. So I had three pillars of uh, entrepreneurship ready for me. And marketing was started from the beta, uh, what do you say, the beta crowd, the parents of my uh, the, ch the child's friends. So I had already started my uh, entrepreneurship journey with a great planning. So what you really need to do if people who are going to do business on their own is to know that uh, entrepreneurship doesn't come in a single day. It comes uh, after a due diligence planning and with the help of a lot of people investing capital, either from your own pockets or from outside. So, um, and I started Herbal Sutras with artisan soaps. And I asked that education is power. And I started teaching because artisan soaps had not started off in Kerala and my soaps were so pretty and so beautiful. I'm not, you know, boasting, but it were, they was were pretty because I had the artistic uh, thing with me and I started learning from abroad at the same time. 
I started classes in Cochin. So these classes happened only once in three months, and these classes were rare. So which means that uh, the classes were very priced, and I had a niche crowd coming for me to classes. So along with my education, along with looking after my child, I was also earning money, and also I set up a brand. So very important for a brand is you should have a name for your brand. You should register your brand. So I registered Herbal Sutras as LLP, Limited Liability Partnership. So everything will not come from your brains. So that I understood, and I got my help from my husband, who was a, already a financial uh, finance professional. So uh, that is very very important. And then on my journey, uh, through my journey, 2018 happened, and 2018 we had Kerala floods. And Kerala floods, I was there in the rescue and the relief operations. So. There is one thing that is very important for an entrepreneur is giving back to the society, and that is when I understood that you should also be a social owner and not just think of empowering yourself. And then um, one of the NGOs approached me and asked me whether I could because I was with them for the rescue operations, having uh, answering calls, etc. So I, they asked me whether uh, I could help teach uh, ladies who had lost everything. Their houses, whatever they were working with, and who were staying in Anganwadi's, uh, whether I could teach them the art of soap making for free, I said I was ready to. So entrepreneur has something to give back to the society, and I went to Anamanada Trishur, Glass Colony, um, Kalamasheri, and few other such places, and I about uh, taught about more than now I must have taught about like two hundred to five hundred ladies. Uh, the art of soap making. It does not mean that every 500 of them would end up uh, as soap makers, but yes, few of them who understood the art of soap making started selling soap. So if my soaps were niche and artisan, theirs was small and approachable, and you could buy from them. So uh, another thing I've learned uh, through uh, the uh, journey of uh, entrepreneurship. Another thing that is very very important. Uh, along with doing my post graduation also i was doing other certifications and as uh, soon as my uh, post graduation was complete and my thesis uh, was over and i decided that every year i would take at least one or two certifications you would ask me why thing is that the athletics field or field for that matter is always booming and new and new updates are coming so entrepreneur doesn't mean you sit in a chair and then you rotate and everything will come your way it means that you are ready for a fight or flight situation so you need to uh, update your skills so right now i play two roles one is i give products uh, in the form of herbal sutras and under herbal sutras i also have a wing called food health you nutrition which is exclusively for dietetics so through that i uh, teach uh, i actually teach people dietetics one part i actually provide them uh, diet plans i teach people how to eat properly or art of eating uh, really and now i'm trying to specialize in sports nutrition reason sports nutrition was it is not such a remunerative field uh, one i stay near a regional sports center so as an entrepreneur you always look for opportunities like where exactly you feel that you would get more opportunity or where you can have more say so i understood that as a person who lives in kadavandra i stay near regional sports center and regional sports center none of the children uh, had any idea of sports nutrition because my thesis was done in sports nutrition whereas i understood that the knowledge practice or attitude of sports nutrition was literally zero so that is how uh, i'm working right now and it is kind of an umbrella uh, where you know uh, how all handmade things are there and where uh, the uh, skill of dietetics is there another important thing about uh, msc dietetics and food service management the course which i have done uh, i think now it is called as dietetics and nutrition the food service management part every, everybody seems to omit uh, but the best part of that paper is that a dietitian can actually develop a product so in my practical session i had actually developed a therapeutic tea therapeutic tea because you understand the body of a person because we are actually food doctors so food doctor understands what happens a person's body and what as a food can be given to a person as a medicine so that is one thing so that is also another field which i am interested in 
So always look up for scopes. Um, and uh, that is my journey. And I'm quite happy uh, in a happy place right now. But I do not want to be in a very comfort zone. And also, um, I'm an orator. I speak to people about food. I make educational videos because there is a lack of educational videos. Uh, reason being, a person who does one day nutrition course is now certified nutritionist. A person who does two years uh, MSc is also a certified nutritionist. People don't understand the difference between a dietitian and a nutritionist. And so trying to tell dietitian can make a nutri uh, meal plan and a nutritionist cannot make a meal plan. I think so that thing is not there in the society and probably trying to educate society more regarding what what the food does to your body and food is mo uh, more important as a medicine than the pills that you take so it's a kind of um, a, a move towards changing the society maybe my perspective has always uh, been that so um, so that is what education has done to me. And moreover, um, I still remember after my thesis presentation, I had the sense of confidence. So um, I know people who've done eight, eight standard also are great entrepreneurs. People who've done a 10 standard also great entrepreneurs. But the education gives you so much power that people will stand and listen to you. And they listen to you because you've got a degree. Maybe the degree will not have given you enough sense. Maybe you would have read it somewhere else. But education is power, and so I'm so thankful that IGNO is there, and probably I might end up taking a course again um, as well. So, uh, and to people who are listening, and uh, for them, uh, I can tell you one thing: entrepreneurship journey isn't easy. Employment is easier because employment, just the interview part, is the just the hurdle. Once you get the interview, every month you get the salary, set salary in your account entrepreneurship you will have to struggle at least for three years for your business to run take it from me it is three years if you tell if you can ask me whether i am an established business i will say no i am still a startup because startup is something which is in a rolling phase there can be situations where you feel that you know i this product this isn't working even my pay, my family hasn't liked it so those family are the beta reviewers so how will i give it to outside so if you have felt that then please stop making the product and in case of your skill if you are a dietitian or exam taking as an example if you believe that your skill is not that much uh, i think uh, initially i also had the same feeling uh, i think you should learn more and read more uh, so every every point of time you will face a hurdle but one thing i can assure you in an entrepreneurship, you are the boss. You make the decisions. But that doesn't mean uh, you will sit in front of the system, you will do the sales, you will do the marketing, you will do the finance and accounting, you will also uh, talk to the client and sell the product. No. Entrepreneurship is a team effort. You, you should sometimes give your uh, finance and accounts. If you have so much of accounts to your CA, or you should, you should hire someone. So it is all planning so what you need to do is pen paper write down what your design plan is if i'm studying right now what am i going to do two years from now what is my plan am i going for employment am i going for partner uh, entrepreneurship and if entrepreneurship uh, i would suggest selecting the right partner is important because always partnership uh, isn't easy in entrepreneurship because uh, for me, my partner doesn't understand the skill I have. My partner doesn't know the product I make. So I'm happy in a better place. He would look after the finance and accounts. But uh, if you cannot do the sales and marketing, I would suggest please uh, outsource it to someone. And entrepreneurship journey might look like Instagram friendly for you. Uh, it isn't. I can, as I said, I am still in a struggling phase, even though people would say, uh, I've heard about you or listen, to, uh, I know about you, etc. I don't have the goosebumps when people tell you the same thing, because I know, even even if you ask Ratan Tata, I'm not comparing myself, but no, when you, when you look up to certain people, keep certain standards, that is no, when you aim for sky level, that is when you reach up to the tree. 
So I have uh, mentors, I have people who I speak to when I come across some difficulties. You, For an entrepreneurship, important thing is you should have a mentor uh, whom you can trust in your journey. No, you shouldn't have your best friend who doesn't know anything about your um, business or your product, but somebody who you can look up to and, you know, for advice. Um, that is mentorship is very important. A business design is very important. Uh, and then if you're keeping somebody in your business, um, yes, they might take away your skill and run away. They might take away your nutritional assessment form and run away. They might take your product, uh, uh, you know, ideas and run away. Uh, that, that, is, that is bound to happen because only then, that is how I studied. That is, you know, only then uh, uh, your system would increase or only then you would survive entrepreneur and uh, my journey hasn't been easy probably when you look at the instagram stuff or the facebook stuff you might think that everything is uh, everything looks rousy but no it hasn't been easy i am still in the struggling phase of an entrepreneurship uh, i am still studying as a student even though i've completed my uh, education uh, but you know, every opportunity that I get, like, you know, Prasida ma'am asked me, are you ready? I said, yes, because this is a proud moment. I could have said no to her uh, saying, uh, I said, there's only a few more hours, ma'am. I could have said that I wasn't prepared. But you no, know, um, what, what is important for an entrepreneur is your confidence, irrespective of whether you have know the language, irrespective of whether you know anything about it, uh, just go for it and you know uh, do it uh, that's what i said when you have the education uh, you have the confidence and you know either or they'll say you know get all few information that you need uh, and then keep reading keep upgrading yourself um, have good idea of what you're going to do uh, we say because you know uh, without any planning or without anything because my friend said come on let, let's have a porota business tomorrow uh, tomorrow we'll make porotas and sell uh, let us not do that because um, life is not easy as even parota making is difficult. So life is not um, so easy to jump into entrepreneurship and jump out of it. And mostly uh, entrepreneurship journey, uh, when you look from outside, as I say, it, uh, it might look rosy. But get your educations, get your ideas, fix it, um, you know, and then uh, I think when your ideas are complete, when everything is in place, I think then the universe, if you believe in, if you keep thinking positively, uh, this is also such an, I always want to be a, a, you know, but I want to be a resource. Uh, Igno, I went and asked in St. Risa, can I be a resource person? So Sharon from St. Risa said, no, they say this uh, PhD people only can be a resource person. I said, okay, then I'll take PhD and come back. So that was, it was a light conversation. Uh, but then when you really yearn for something, um, the entire universe uh, conspires. It's not just Paolo Coelho who said that. Uh, I think it is there written in every scriptures. Um, so get motivation every day because uh, entrepreneurship uh, requires motivation and not only really money in your pockets and banks. And always you not, may not have money in your banks as an entrepreneur if that is what you're leading for. But sharpen your skills, uh, get your ideas right, and I think uh, all is set. And I look two people I look up to for my skill as a dietitian is Rujuda Devakar. There are sayings that she did not complete her dietetic, she's just a poor nutritionist. I don't care, but uh, for me, Rujuda Devakar, what she does for the society, if you look up to her Instagram, what she, she gives out to the society. When you give out something, you get it in multi-flow. So, and I look for my business perspectives and business thinking. I look up to Ratan Tata because for him also, I mean, I believe he's a social entrepreneur. He's a philanthropist. Only when you give, you get back in multitude. So uh, have uh, people you look up to get motivated every day and probably we'll meet somewhere else. And I, I don't know whether I cannot see your faces, but somewhere, sometime, if I meet you, please come across and talk to me. I would love to talk to each one of you. And um, I really need to thank two people for the post-graduation I have done. One is Srinath, my husband, because, uh, no, he is not there in the audience. So I, uh, because one, because he pushed me into IGNO. Uh, I didn't know IGNO had a course called MSC DFSM. Uh, he pushed me into IGNO. And uh, to everyone who says you're from IGNO, I said, I proudly say, this is one of the best decisions of my life. 
and to second to Mohammad Ansar sir who gave me that counseling that day who made me uh, opt for it and changed my life altogether so that is here and here I am I'm happy that I've this is actually a goosebumps moment, ma'am. And this is kind of, you know, the uh, universe conspired for me. Thank you so very much. A great opportunity for me. Keep calling me. I would be well, love, love to do this again and again. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, Lakshmi, for that enriching talk, I must say. And you are given enough food for thought for today's session for uh, our audience as well. And I'm sure those who are listening to this talk, uh, would have got uh, enough ideas uh, for being a, uh, for getting onto a startup journey or being an entrepreneur. So uh, a very big thanks to you, Lakshmi. Uh, now I request uh, a regional director from RC Vadakara, Dr. Rajesh, sir, to kindly uh, share his view, sir. Uh, thank you, Prasida. It is um, always a pleasure uh, to be part of any program that is uh, uh, being organized by RC Kuchin. Um, uh, I do have very fond memories of uh, working in Kuchin for the lower four years. And uh, because of that, uh, I, I do not miss any opportunity to be part of uh, any deliberation that is being organized out there. Uh, uh, first of all, let me uh, uh, congratulate uh, our speaker, uh, Lakshmi, for uh, that very vibrant and uh, um, thoughtful uh, talk which she has delivered today. Uh, my only uh, regret is that uh, there are very few audiences um, uh, to, um, uh, to take home uh, the kind of message that she has delivered. Otherwise, I feel uh, it should have been um, uh, aired to a, a wider audience. A lot of people would have uh, benefited a great deal from the entrepreneurial journey that she has undertaken. Uh, of course, the insights that you have as a practitioner of entrepreneurship is something very different from what you get in text. Text can tell you a hundred other things, but uh, it cannot tell you how you actually uh, fight fight it out every day uh, in your office, in your uh, workshops, in your um, uh, kind of uh, uh, trade negotiations, so on and so forth. These are all practical things that uh, you uh, learn only by uh, practically going into uh, the stream of things. And um, uh, taking that perspective into mind, I feel uh, what uh, Lakshmi Madam has told uh, us today is something very, very important for all of us to invite. Basically, when we, um, uh, what I also feel is that um, the ecosystem, the entrepreneurial ecosystem that ICNO needs to develop is also uh, something that we have to uh, think about. Because uh, she has been uh, taking initiative on her own. She has worked it out on her own. Uh, her husband has uh, supported her, but uh, what kind of institutional support have we given as um, either as regional center or as the institution to help her succeed in her goal? That is something that we all need to work out. Of course, um, uh, nowadays things are much different uh, from the days maybe when she started out. Maybe uh, if I am not wrong, uh, uh, Lakshmi Madam must, must have started out maybe five or six years back or even before that. So um, uh, those were times when uh, these kinds of uh, uh, the kind of ecosystem that we talk about today uh, did not exist. However, today, if you look at it, uh, we are talking about all these technological readiness levels, right from technological readiness level one to nine. And uh, I would, uh, from after uh, listening to what um, uh, she was uh, uh, just referring to, I would uh, put her current state at somewhere uh, at a technological level, uh, readiness level uh, eight, seven to eight, because still uh, the product um, uh, maybe uh, can have a wider market. Maybe a lot of innovation can still be brought into the kind of products that she uh, has uh, developed. Then uh, if you look at them, uh, another uh, terminology which comes in is the manufacturing re uh, readiness level. So manufacturing readiness level, I, I think she has gone up to the maximum point extent uh, uh, possible with the current technology. So maybe she said technology uh, MR, uh, MR level 9 or 10. And as far as the investment uh, readiness level is concerned, I feel her uh, product uh, uh, now deserves investment from outside, maybe from angel investors or uh, institutional investors as such. So uh, what I would like to suggest is that Maybe uh, we can, uh, at the IGNO level itself, we can try to incubate uh, her product. In fact, we can uh, incubate it um, maybe with um, uh, sufficient support from uh, NCIDE and also from um, our um, ministry. 
maybe this um, uh, the product and the um, readiness levels that she is currently at can be enhanced a great deal. So I would uh, definitely suggest that um, she should visit the UPT pro portal and also submit um, her um, uh, 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 her uh, present uh, uh, development level uh, as far as uh, the product and the process is concerned. And uh, I'm sure that the university will only be happy to recommend her um, uh, her uh, product for uh, wider uh, market assimilation and things like that. So uh, that can even uh, fetch funding from uh, uh, the ministry because the ACT and the ministry, uh, ministry of Education are working together to bring up startups like hers to the mainstream. So definitely I feel uh, she should go to the Yukti portal, submit her idea, and uh, not uh, anyway, she is not at an idea stage. She is already at an implementation stage. Even she has gone through the prototypes and everything. So she is uh, she is at an in, a, a, a implementation stage, and therefore um, uh, she can take the benefit of not only the ministry funding but also the funding from uh, angel investors if she uh, so so des uh, desires. And that can in fact definitely scale up the level of uh, innovation that we are talking about. And uh, I feel uh, RC, uh, RC uh, I'm sorry, I'm, uh, since I'm from RC Vadagara right now, um, the term RC Vadagara comes to my, my uh, mouth. But the, um, RC Cochin, in fact, should take a uh, proactive step in incubating uh, such uh, projects. Um, because the, now the system is entirely different. Uh, the kind of uh, um, uh, mechanism that is in place is entirely different. A lot of things can happen. So uh, definitely, there, maybe this can be a starting point. And uh, we from here at RC Vatagara can also uh, help you in this endeavor because um, uh, as far as the, uh, I am myself the uh, IPR coordinator of the university as far as uh, the present uh, setup is concerned. So definitely I think uh, we can also help from here. And uh, of course, uh, RC Kuchin will be there, uh, right there to help you out in all the endeavors, but uh, we shall also help you out from here in uh, whatever way we can. And uh, I'm sure that uh, this is the kind of business idea that needs scaling up. Uh, and once it is scaled up, then uh, definitely sky is the limit. So all the best to you. And I love listening to your uh, uh, rather conversation. It was more in a conversation style. And uh, I congratulate R.C. Kuchin uh, for uh, uh, organizing such an event and bringing one of our own students to the fore uh, so that their experiences can be shared among all of us. Thank you, Vatakar. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, for your suggestions. I'm sure Lakshmi would definitely take note of his suggestions and uh, would act upon it so that and if, uh, she can definitely be in touch with us uh, in case any help is required in this regard uh, so that we can get in touch with R.C. Vadagara also uh, with sir for any help in this regard. So that's a very good suggestion uh, for this, uh, which sir has very frankly provided here. And I'm thankful to you, sir, for that. Now I request uh, Jalja Kumari, ma'am, in case you want to share some of your views. Just for uh, remarkably, uh, and I, I have to tell, uh, I have to remind Lakshmi also, but sir, uh, luckily we got sir, because uh, he's an economist. He has uh, so many world trade experiences in his learning and uh, public relation. And especially now he is one of the most important and eminent uh, part of the innovation cell of the university and IPR coordinator. So definitely, what all things are have told, uh, I will come in. Uh, it will be fruitful for you because uh, Igno is uh, um, motivating and uh, enhancing the startup missions through its innovation cell. We have NCIDE, National Center for Innovation. Uh, one uh, cell is there. One department is there for us. Uh, so that's through that cell. So many. Uh, supporting activities are going on, initiatives are going on, and the SAR will be a uh, factor and SAR will be a catalyst for that. Uh, so you can be in touch with us, you can be always in touch with IGNU, and uh, uh, we will uh, give you uh, opportunity to uh, contact with the SAR. And uh, I think uh, unknowingly, means uh, incidentally this uh, opportunity got to us uh, to invite you and to yeah. share with you and hear from you and all. This is what I think. Sometimes it may be a good moment for us, for all of us. So uh, yes. what we are trying to, yeah, one point Saru was telling, 
uh, instead of searching people from outside, finding out our own one gem is a, a, a good thing, I think. So we are so happy and I am sharing that happiness to you once again. And uh, we are proud to be with the uh, sir again. Uh, now I feel that uh, uh, Adi's uh, gap, uh, I'm feeling with that, with his comments and all this moment. Because uh, our regional director is not here, but we don't feel so. Because uh, sir is uh, giving that suggestions and the linkage to IGNU uh, through our innovation cell. And it's a genuine and it's an authentic approach, authentic hand. So it's, uh, I feel it is uh, too much fruitful. And definitely, you can be uh, the part of IGNU again. Uh, and uh, IGNU is also needed uh, students like you. And uh, this is a proud moment for us to promote IGNU programs. And uh, people like you are the ambassadors of IGNU programs. That also good. And uh, in any way, we are very much happy, Lakshmi, uh, with your uh, interaction and all. And um, don't worry that uh, now only 12 people are there. But this is a YouTube live session so definitely there will be chance to uh, view the program by many people in future and they will ask us it's what our hope because we didn't get uh, enough time to uh, publicize uh, this program immediately we were uh, uh, preparing this and everything that, that you know no so, problem ma'am the best of the lot is here no ma'am happy that uh, you're all there we have, I've spoken to you before also. I'm so happy that uh, uh, you and Rajesh sir and all everyone are there from Regional Center Coaching. So, so much indebted to you all. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for doing very much. So thank you, ma'am. Always a pleasure to be part of uh, any such program. And thank you for inviting me. <laughs> Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, shall I request uh, uh, Shri Murli sir to kindly deliver the vote of thanks for the session, please? Uh, okay, madam. <laughs> the program, our uh, Lakshmi madam, a lot of bangi actor is present. Up to short period, I think, a lot of bangi actor. We have one slow one. This is the first one. Okay. And then, madam, I think this participation is very important. Oh, on behalf of IGNO, I thank Srimadhi Leshmi for handling a detailed session. I thank to Dr. Telja Gumari, Dr. Prasida Madam, and Dr. Rajesh sir, who has joined now for this meeting. So thank to all of all the participants, sir, and uh, all the region centre staff who have joined for this meeting. Once again, thanks to all the participants of this meeting. Madam, live. Uh, ah, this topic is all the